Hey, Coach, thanks for taking a look at secrets to scoring against any defense. I wanted to give you just a little bit more than what was offered on your first download. I want to give you a blob and slob play that used some of those actions that we talked about. So you can incorporate these, maybe throw them in uh, real quick and find that you score more points, get another shot that the defense wasn't expecting. Uh, what I also want to do is give you a couple of more actions to add to that. They're things that you can incorporate really simply and easily in your next practice. So the first thing, let's take a look at a couple of plays. And first is our baseline out of bounds play. And this one uh, deals with misdirection. All right. So in our misdirection, what we're going to do is we're going to have our one take the ball out of bounds, and we're going to be in a four low set. So we're going to put our post players like so. And we want to have our four and our five both move at the same time. And we're going to set a little screen here for the two. So we're going to remove that defensive guy out of there. Now, after we do that, our five continues to come over because four is going to turn and it's going to come all the way back to this block. So on that, he'll be posting up, hopefully get the ball before he hits the block, but he'll be right there. Our three, X3 has got to stay true to that man. Our two has come up and X2 has came, come with him. Our five, who screened way out here, is just going to turn and roll. What you'll find is a lot of times they'll switch. So X5 is going to switch, and he's going to take this man. But that leaves X4 on the back side of the five. So when we turn and seal, we'll find that this misdirection, a lot of times, is going to allow this man to be open. Every once in a while, they try to fight it, and you'll get it right to the four right away for an easy layup. But if you'll have this bat guy really seal hard, you'll find that he's going to get the ball quite often. So that's a misdirection out of a 1-4 low um, that you can put in real easily and your team can run right away. Now let's take a look at uh, a, a sideline out of bounds play. And this is going to deal with two different things. The first one is going to be a misdirection. And then we've got a screen the screener action that we're going to throw in there as well. So we're going to put two of these together and see what we, what's best and what's available for your team. Is The first, we'll have our three taking the ball out of bounds. We're going to line up our two. And let's actually move that two down just a little bit. He's a little too far out there. We're going to line up our two, our four, and our one, and we're going to sit our five right here. On the slap of the ball, two is going to come all the way down, wants a clear one, and both of these guys are going to turn, and they're going to rescreen. That's the misdirection, rescreen, and come right back where he came from. Three is going to get it to him, and we're going to have the opportunity to either get a three-point shot here or – possibly a dump down low. So that's the misdirection part of it. If we wanted to add one more piece to it, maybe our, our big man down low isn't the best big man, not super reliable, or you just want to throw in a little uh, twist to this, what you'd have your do at you have your players do after they set that rescreen. So two has already come through, he's come back. On his way back, five is going to come up and set a screen for the screener, since one just screened, and we'll get the ball from three to two, and we're going to look at the one diving in. So we've got the misdirection to start it, and then we've got a back screen, which is a screen the screener from five to one. Both of these could offer uh, an opportunity for a score, and there's a little bit of a twist there if you run one one time, run the second one the next time, and see what you can get. So wanted to give you both of those coaches so that you can – throw those in if you need something uh, against you know your next opponent uh, that they haven't seen yet. Now let's take a look at the actions that I was talking about. And these actions are not difficult at all. And first is a loop. We use a loop for a lot of reasons. One is we want to help our guards or help the person with the ball alleviate pressure. So it's a pressure release for us. If it happens to be our one with the ball and we want to loop it, well, what we'll do is we'll holler loop four. You're going to make a shallow cut underneath. One's going to dribble it over. And all we did was switch the ball from one side to the other. If our post player is on the other side, that'd be another reason to do this. But this just alleviates pressure from the one gives them somewhere to go otherwise they're left dribbling in a small little tight spot because the four is already over here well have him go low 
Make sure he doesn't go high, otherwise he'll invite the trap. But if he goes low, the one can come over, can set up whatever play you want. You can also run this with a wing. If you want to loop this guy on the wing, we're going to dribble and say loop. Three is going to make a cut, going to replace. And maybe instead of starting a play with a pass like it normally was started, you start it with a loop and off the dribble. As long as the ball gets there, you can start running that play. It's just a little variation to throw the defense off and to allow a pressure release for your guards. Let's take a look now at X. X isn't a, a tough concept at all but it makes defenses move and have to communicate. When we call X, all we do is run one player to one side and the other to the other side in that fashion. And a lot of times what will happen is these defenders will stop here and they'll just switch. That's okay because what we've done is we've allowed space. So as that guy's coming out, this man's at a dead stop. So if three's coming out quick, we can get the ball to him without any pressure on him at all. So it's pretty easy to get the ball in there. But if if these guys are really overplaying it hard and you just can't seem to get the ball in because they're in they're denying everything, <clears throat> just run an X. Run an X and you'll find that these guys are trailing, even if they follow them, they don't switch. They're trailing on the way out. You can get the ball in there. You can run your play without a problem. Don't try to throw it there and try to, you know, continue to have your man fight for it and get frustrated and get the ball tipped. Just have him X. It's an easy pressure release, and it makes the defense have to communicate even if there's not a lot of pressure. Anytime they've got to watch to see where somebody's going or where they're coming from, it's to the offense's advantage because they're not ready for whatever action's coming next. Switch is the next one. And these don't always have to be run with the one. They can be run with anybody, but just for the sake of making it easy here. A, a switch is just where we're going to tell two guys that we want them to change positions. So if we call a switch, it's not going to happen on the ball side because that'd be a loop. Loop would be the three coming up. A switch is where these players are going to perform like a loop, but neither of them have the ball. And we're going to get the four down here. We're going to get the two up top. Maybe they're in a zone, and they're let's say they're in a – uh, one two two zone here and we don't want our four up here he's not really a shooter or a ball handler we'll just switch them if they're man to man on us and we like a matchup better maybe our, our play is going to offer um, a cut for the the low man in this maybe our five is going to kind of set a flex cut here instead of having the two because the two is not a very good finisher have your five so on this pass right there We'll make it a shuffle cut. We'll shuffle it right there, and we'll pass it in because he's a better finisher, a little bit longer of a player. And a switch is an easy way to get a new player without having to pull the ball out, tell guys where to go from the sideline. They automatically know switch. All right, these two guys are going to switch on that opposite side of the ball. And then the last one is a push. And the push is – a signal where the ball handler is dribbling at this person. They have not said loop, so they're not looping him. They're just dribbling at him, and that's going to push this man through. Everybody else would rotate. It's another way to get the ball where you want it to start a play without having to pass it. Uh, it can act as a little bit of a pressure release. It can act as a backdoor pass if you teach them that. Uh, but if you teach players to say push, then they'll know on the dribble over, they're just going to cut all the way through. So a loop, an X, a switch, and a push, all easy ones, all terminology. Act as a little bit of a play, but you don't stop for a timeout. You don't stop to set things up. They happen extremely quick, and it makes it tough on the defense to figure out what's going on. So coaches, hopefully you like this little bit. You add it in with the secrets to scoring against any defense, those seven actions. You'll find that you have a whole offense in itself, and none of it is scripted. None of it is um, something that the defense knows they're coming, and that's the secret to scoring and getting good shots. Give yourself the advantage and don't let the defense be able to scout you and to know exactly what you're going to do. So, Coaches, hope you appreciate it, uh, and keep looking out for more good stuff. Thanks.